Hey folks, it's Greg from Greg's Country Cabin Outdoors. Hope you're having a great day. Um, I just got done mowing the properties and uh, I decided to try a little fishing. I'm going to fish for bluegill. I uh, went crappie fishing earlier today and caught a nice big crappie, but only and I caught three bass, but only caught the one crappie. So now that I'm done mowing, I've got a little extra time before the sun sets. It's seven o'clock in the evening. I'm going to try bluegill fishing, and I'm going to use my favorite bobber. It's a Line and Kugel's beer can bobber specifically designed for fishing <laughs> and my eagle claw rod and reel so here we go let's see what happens now normally I would fish right there underneath that willow but the water's been low and it has just recently come up in the last few weeks to the point where there would be fish in there, but they've already spawned. So I'm not going to fish that particular area right now. I'm going to go on across where the berm was. I don't know if I showed you that on a previous video or not. But um, <clears throat> anyway, where those little sprigs are sticking up out of the water was dry land last year at this time. The beer can, I guess some low life around here has been deciding to just throw their trash wherever they throw it. <coughs> I've always tried to take care of this property because I love it. It's a little bitty lake, only seven and a half acres, but you know what? It's a lot of fun to be here. So let's see what's out there. Well, there's not going to be anything right there. Oh, that's not good. But hey, at least it came back out of the tree. <laughs> now it's all wrapped up in my video equipment. But that's okay, I'll get it out. Before I go any further, I need to back up. There goes a nice bass across the water right there. So there's something right up in there. Let's just see what it is. There's plenty of bass in this lake. There's always been plenty of bass in this lake. We've also got bluegill, red ear, crappie, or fiddler, or yellow belly. Fiddlers, yellow bellies, whatever you want to call them, get brought in, their eggs get carried in. We've got a blue heron that nests out here and uh, I'm sure it brings them in from the river bottoms and to eat up on the bluegill and I haven't caught a good bluegill out here for a while <clears throat> Uh, when we bought the shed tow property, it had an A-frame on it <clears throat> that was built in the early 70s. And it was a really nice A-frame at one time. But by the time we got a hold of it, it wasn't worth having. It was The roof was completely rotted away. The second floor was starting to rot away. Well, mostly rotted away. And the first floor was starting to rot away. Uh, my brother-in-law helped me tear it down. And he actually fell through the floor of it in the main floor the first floor trying to help me tear it down so <laughs> it was shot it was all grown up you can see how bad it was this is how bad the timber was when we bought it it's been like that 
for many, many years now. We finally got a hold of it and I cleaned off the area where the shed toe sits. So it's a lot more livable, but it's still private. <clears throat> it's still, you can't get good access to the lake without coming onto my cabin property. So, you know, I mean, I still got a lot of cleanup to do there. My wife doesn't want me to clean it up because she wants the privacy. Which, I can understand that, but I want it to be a lot cleaner so that our guests can enjoy the view when they're out here. The only time you get to enjoy the view is either in the spring before the leaves come on or in the fall after they've fallen off. Well, I caught something. Don't know what it is. It's pulling pretty hard, so I'm guessing it's probably a bass. It's not flipping like a bluegill. <clears throat> Bluegills usually squirm and flip and carry on. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> it is a bluegill. Surprise me. That's not a bad bluegill either. <laughs> well, that's a good start. That's where I wanted to get. There's another one. Don't know what it is. It flipped. But I was busy turning the camera on. <laughs> so I didn't see what it was. Oh, it's a little bass. Well, gee whiz. Surprise, surprise. A lake full of bass and I caught one. Well, I don't know what it is. Looks like a bass. We'll see. Yep, it's another bass, a little one. <clears throat> I don't know if you've noticed how peaceful it is out here and quiet. There's houses on this lake that people live in. But it's always peaceful and quiet on this lake. Always. Never fails. Now something just hit my bobber. They didn't go for my worm. They went for my bobber. Apparently there's some pretty good sized bass in there. And they want the top, top water stuff. So right in front of the point of the bow here is an area where the bluegills normally spawn. And I know they've already spawned, it's late in the season, but I gotta try anyway. Well, I don't know what it is, but it hit pretty hard. It looks like a nice bluegill. Yep, that's a nice bluegill. Especially for this lake. So that's two. <laughs> I'm not hitting them real good with the bluegill. I can hit them bass all day long now. Other times that I've fished for bass, I couldn't catch them if I had to. Now, I can't catch the bluegill. And it used to be all I ever caught was a bluegill. Bluegill and the red ears. Well, now I've got two that I can throw in the freezer. In case you're wondering, I'm using... Um, night crawlers for bait they go for live bait a lot easier than they will for a plastic and I find around here the night crawlers are what they go for okay so I'm going to attempt to show you if I can because I got this wacky worm on just how plentiful the bass are in this lake That hit over by the shore. I'll pull it out of the moss and drag it in just like that. Just that quick. I have a bass on the line. 
Now it's going to flip off. It did. But that's all right because that's one less that I have to clean. Anyway, here we go again. Let's try again. See if we can catch one. Right over there by the moss. Right by the edge. The gnats are crazy out here. We've got buffalo gnats out here and they are terrible. If you don't keep buggins or vanilla or something come kind of spray on you, they're going to drive you nuts. Now that one just bit the hook right there. I drug it in all the way, but it was a it was another small bass. And they're largemouth bass. They're not Rockies. They're just <clears throat> Most of them are pretty small um, because, like I said in the past videos, we're way overstocked out here. You couldn't fish this lake out if you had to. An otter couldn't clean this lake out. There's years when I've been out here, I couldn't catch a bass if I had to. All I'd catch is bluegill and red ear. And the red ear are hard to catch out here. We've got crappie. And my next door neighbor can catch them all day long. I can't catch them here. I don't know why. I can catch them at my friend's house where I caught those that I put on the last video. But for some reason out here, I can't catch crappie. That just flew into my mouth. Time for me to go in, get a bath, and get cleaned up for the day. Been a long day, been a long week. Well, let's see if I can reel this one in. It's a bass. It's just a little one, but hey, that's how plentiful they are in this lake. You throw the right lure at them. You can catch them all day long. Well, I didn't get the last one on tape. There's one right there. Here it is, a little bitty bass. Looks like he spit it. Yep, he spit it. He took the worm. Well, folks. I'm done. It's time to go into the house and clean my bluegill, stick them in the freezer, and call it a night. I managed to catch a whole bunch of fish today, uh, so I got a drink to the catch. Crown Royal, just a swig. No more than that. Because I gotta have that bottle last all summer long.
<laughs> well, it was a good day of fishing. I caught a real nice crappie. I caught three bass. Well, three big bass and a whole bunch of little ones and two bluegill. And I came to the cabin to bluegill fish because I had already been fishing at my friend's house where I caught the crappie and the three big bass. And so I brought my box of worms and I thought I'm going to give it a shot because normally out here when I'm fishing I'll catch bluegill and red ear. Very seldom catch a bass. But I think it goes in cycles because I've had years when I've caught bass and never caught bluegill and red ear. And other years when I couldn't catch a bass if I had to. Well this has been one of those bass years. And it depends on the lure. It depends on what you're hoping to catch. <laughs> and what you're willing to try. There's a lot of finesse involved. A little bit of finagling. But I have my canoe. And I have my kayak. At first I loved it. Because you're right down on top of the water. It doesn't take anything to paddle it around this lake. Even on a windy day. And today's one of the best days I've had for fishing on this lake when it hadn't been extremely windy. In fact, there wasn't any wind at all. But there's a storm coming in, so, you know, that's what you expect, the calm before the storm. It was a great day. It was... Well, had a nice hot bath. Had a chance to relax and soak out some of the pain. It was nice. Time to relax, kick back, and listen to a little bit of Mike Anderson, the original dulcimer guy. And uh, <clears throat> if you like dulcimer music, Mike Anderson is one of the best. He travels all over the world and does shows. He used to build dulcimers and teach dulcimer lessons. He still teaches. He's got a studio in his hometown. He's got a website, Mike Anderson, the original dulcimer guy. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for quite some time. I used to see him when I was doing the um, Lincoln reenactments. Uh, New Salem militia and that sort of thing. Um, we became pretty good friends. I actually traded him a hat for three of his uh, CDs. And I thought it was a fairly good trade. He liked it. He was happy with it because he knows he can't find another one of those hats anywhere. And all he has to do is tear out the liner that I put in there and put a new one in. And he doesn't have to deal with sweat. <laughs> He's a great guy. Look him up. Mike Anderson, the original dulcimer guy. Good morning everybody. It's about 5.30 in the morning. Got my coffee brewing and I'm going to get out on the lake see if I can catch some fish. The gnats are already terrible. Well it's almost time to go fishing so let's say a quick prayer here. God grant that I may live to fish for another shining day. But when my final cast is made I then most humbly pray. When nestled in your landing net, as I lay peacefully asleep, you'll smile at me and judge that I'm good enough to keep. What a great way to start the morning. That particular sign was given to me by a friend of mine, and I just happened to see it 
and I posted a picture of it and said, I want one of these. And he went and bought it. He didn't say anything, didn't tell me it was coming. About three days later, there it was. So thank you very much to my good friend Roger. Let's go fishing. Well, we got morning dew. Grandpa used to say, <clears throat> if you got dew in the morning, it wasn't going to rain. But if you didn't have dew, it had rained before noon. Well, according to the weather, it's supposed to rain by 10 o'clock. I guess we'll see, huh? Well, looky there. There was a fish right there where I normally catch them. There's a bass. Nope. It's a tiny little bluegill. Oh no, that's a red ear. That's a red ear. They're good fighters. They're better fighters than bluegill. There's a nice one. Let's see if we can get it in the boat. That's a nice bluegill. If you're wondering, this is a Miller High Life bobber, not a Linen Kugels. I've had this one a lot longer than the Linen Kugels. My wife bought one for me years ago, one of the first ones I ever had. And uh, so I purchased a few more once I found out where they were. And I keep that one in my life vest, the pockets of it. <clears throat> it's about time. Let's see what we got. Oh, it looks like a bass. Yep. Little bass. Well, there's a nice bluegill. Feels like there's a breeze kicking up, which it does out here a lot. This is like a wind tunnel down here because the banks are so high. I wish this lake was about 10 foot deeper. Get it a lot closer to my cabin. Well, I got a little bass. That's to be expected when you're on a lake full of them. Oh, little bluegill. Looks like that one got it in the gill. As much as I don't want to keep it, it's going to die anyway, so I might as well take it in. 
That's not a bad bluegill there. Anyway, nice little bluegill, nice bluegill. He's an old dog, been roughed up a little bit, too. There's another one, another nice bluegill. Oh, come on, baby. Rock and roll. Aww. Oh, they're still on there. I thought I just had weeds. <laughs> That's a red ear. That's a real nice red ear. See the red? Okay. Another little bass. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's a bluegill. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon to make sure you get notified whenever I put up a new video.